Haiku, Season 2, Episode 5. Here we go, finally, the game with Nekoma. Oh, they actually played, but lost without Hinata and Kageyama. Until now. Yes, sir. <laughs> this music, though, it's so dramatic. This matchup, one on one, Levi and Hinata. Not Levi, Lev. <laughs> Why was that so badass? Just by himself, just screaming. No fear, no shame. I'm a little bit worried about Hinata though after last episode because he's getting some ideas, getting some ideas in his head about his ace thing. You know, I feel like if you're good enough and dominant enough to be the ace, that's a decision other people make for you. You don't want to assign yourself that role. Like, you can assign yourself the role of doing your best, playing the role you're supposed to play on the team that helps it the most. The title aspect of it is sort of whatever. It does nothing. I think it has merit only as a title people give you as a sign of respect from them. Episode 5, Greed! Uh-oh, there it is. Finally, the drinking. The prophecy has come true. Or he can be greedy and just crush it. Force everyone to succumb to his will. Make them recognize. This is my team. And there's Lev. I can see Hinata kind of spiraling here. Must push harder by myself. Maybe I'm not giving him enough credit. Oh no, and he taunts him. Is he listening? All over it. He's all over it. Yeah, he's 499 centimeters. Hey. Not as wondering that himself. Coach is always watching, always watching and evaluating. Yeah, I mean, uh, they did just take away a really crucial tool. Verdict is out on this, I think. It's an inspiring thought, but... Oh no, he's cutting in. I knew he was going to cut in. No! No! He's blinded. Oh. That hurt way more than physically. His wanting it is great. Like, I love it. But... <laughs> With a smile on his face. He's just... So gleeful, he's thrilled. Coach likes it. Yeah, that's definitely what we're exploring here. How do you find this balance? Huh. In a very strange way, this is perhaps revisiting some of the things we saw early on from Kageyama also. And I, I think my views were a little controversial on that, where I admired the particular aspect of that situation in which Kageyama was just demanding the best in a way his teammates were not able to adjust to, which I think is not appropriate in certain domains, but it's kind of appropriate in sport, although he certainly could have handled it better and it was not totally without fault. Does he not a force his way in to being the, the ace? I mean, surely there's a way to do that in a way that benefits the team, but there are all sorts of pitfalls as well. It also risks shattering the team cohesion. I feel like it's an endeavor that will be judged solely on its outcome. If you're going to go for it, you better be successful. It's like a big responsibility you're taking on your shoulders if you want to rise to the top and be a leader. It's not a decision to be made lightly. If you have ambition like that, you got to be able to back it up. You can't be blinded by pride or ego or attention seeking. I'm sort of conflicted about it. Interesting. <laughs> okay. You gotta do better than that, Hinata, if you wanna be the ace. That wasn't it. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Oh, 
That's sort of unsatisfying. That's a recipe for conflict. He's just gonna jump in and try to take it. This is the first fracture in their play, in their spirit for a long time. Yeah, it's different. It feels totally different. The vibe is all wrong. And they lost again. They've hit a wall. Coach, I feel like it's kind of on you. And this coach sees all. He knows all. And he loves it. He's having a great time. Bitter pills. This is not, yeah, this is not the momentum we thought we had. This is not where we thought we were. <laughs> but another great speech. That's exactly what they needed. Always wise. <laughs> 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 uh, my spare time. <laughs> it's my second gig. First gig is volleyball. But if they're the team I think they are, this fracture will be good. It is a fracture, but the fracture will break them down, and from there they can probably build it into something better. Because that's where their heart is. I mean, for all the talk about greed, it doesn't really feel that bad from Hinata. It doesn't feel like actual selfishness. It's like desire, and he knows he can do better, and there's just not room for that. He may not be doing it in the most tactful way, but at the same time, you want him to be playing at his best, and you want to see people rise through challenges to reach their greatest potential. And I think the team will correctly assess that. It's not him being a diva, right? I think that's a subtle but qualitative detail that's really important. They're a pretty humble lot overall, and their minds are set to helping each other and to win. So there is a way that this works out. Even Asahi just now, Asahi talking about how Anata's going to eat him up, it didn't even seem threatened or bitter. It just seemed like, okay, this is the path that we're on. And they lost on that too. They don't want to repeat the same mistake again. Huh, this is interesting ideological rift. Kagama's position is understandable though, because their strength thus far has relied on what they know, what they have right now. Breaking that up risks damaging a lot that they rely on. Haiku, civil war. I was not expecting this. Music is so dramatic too. Well, they're not mutually exclusive, right? Oh no, everyone's coming out of the woodwork to pile up on Hinata. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, when things are perfectly aligned and you're focused, you just know, you just feel it before it happens. I mean, now's the time, right? These are exhibition games. Now's the time to settle this out. There's room for play, I think. He's not bluffing. <laughs> Daichi, you want to weigh in here? I feel like the Daichi giving an opinion one way or the other will settle it. We're all a little heated. That's fair. But you gotta revisit it. Even just, I don't know, just to pay attention to Hinata. See where it goes. This is a major punishment for him too, having to sit back, watch people play. It's a lot of time to reflect. Coach just loving life again. This is not the arc I was expecting. I was expecting like a brutal back and forth. But it ended up being more of an internal battle for Karasuno. We didn't even get to really see a game. Just a couple points. They hit such a great point. I guess breaking through that is painful. A lot to think about. But what are we supposed to do with ourselves? What are the chances that they actually take a break from volleyball? And there it is, already. Before night could even break. Give him a chance. That's all we're here. Give him a lot of chances. A lot of, a lot of chances. That's all we're here. More chances. More chances! Don't give up! But he's not gonna do it like this. He's too wound up. 
だからこの速攻にお前の意思は必要ないって言ったんだ俺がブロックに捕まんないトスを上げてやるそれじゃあ俺はうまくなれないままだ It needs to be both. This stems from that conversation they had at the end of that loss. Both of them taking full responsibility. <laughs> she doesn't know what she walked into. She got more than she bargained for. That was uncalled for. That was a lot, a lot too much. <laughs> This is sort of what I was alluding to, I think, last episode when I was talking about how getting from the intermediate proficiency level to the advanced proficiency level, or even harder, getting from the advanced level to like the elite level, has a unique difficulty where the paths there are not obvious and they require at least one element that is way beyond normal human. It can either be just an insane amount of work and practice, just brute force to a level that few people are capable of, or it'll be an insight that is the combination of a lot of different thoughts, individual thoughts. That are difficult to synthesize, or it'll be something really painful like giving up on what you think you know, letting go of things that feel sacred in order to kind of devolve a little bit so you can evolve better, or some combination of multiple things. Notably, they, they do seem mostly united in the idea that something needs to change, that you know, just the way they've been doing things and repeated practicing isn't going to be enough among a group of elites who are also doing the same amount of practicing but have unique skills. And both sides have their element of truth. It's the stability versus innovation debate. That's constantly raging because you want to hold on to the things that are valuable and have gotten you to this point. You don't dismiss your institutions, you don't dismiss your staples or take them for granted in the success you've experienced, yet you don't want to become overly attached to them so that you're not growing. And that's the difficulty. It's hard to find the optimal point. And they're hashing that out in a very personal way. I don't think anything will be solved today. I think Hanada's one flaw in this is not his drive, which is admirable, not his desire to become better, which is great, but that he's kind of blinded by emotion here. He's doing no good to himself, even though I can feel he has the talent there to back. It up. Oh, they're fighting. They're having a physical fight. This is a lot. Oh, damn. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, hash it out. Hash it out. Get out some of this emotion. I like how he's complimenting in mid fight. Set him straight, senpai. Tanaka's a great one to show up. And they're lucky it's not Daichi, because they would be dead. We need to have this out. This is vented pressure. They're all they've all been feeling since the loss. They've been suppressing this so long. It just came out in a terrible way. The exhibition losses just brought it all out. Yeah, they reached a, a really nice piece for a while there. I don't think that's changed. Their saving grace is they still want the same thing. They're still aligned in their goal and their commitment. They will find a medium, a happy medium that works because of that, because their hearts are true. Antigilus, <laughs> please. That's why Daichi is the leader. I feel like he sees a bigger picture. I believe it. I've distinctly experienced moments like that, though not in volleyball. I think it happens when you're just perfectly aligned, perfectly focused. Or is it? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that shot. It's a thumbnail shot right there. This is a big leap of faith, but I think the ability to take that leap is what will separate a lot of the teams. And he's advocating for himself. He's going above and beyond to make this a reality. If he pushes hard enough, I mean, he will. Like, he'll submit everyone to, to his will. Hopefully in a way that's amicable, a way that they're all happy with. But, I mean, yeah, I think just in general, a group will fall in line with the person who's most convicted. This is a very surprising episode, but I kind of love it. It's not the direction I thought it would go in at all, because it felt like we had sorted a lot of this stuff out. But I think that's part of its genius, because growth is not necessarily linear, and sometimes you do have to take steps backwards to break yourself up and die, die certain deaths, localized deaths, to have something new to 
to build, as terrifying as that might be for a team that's already pretty skilled. Come to think of it, I think sometimes success, even though we don't think of it this way, contains the seeds of its own destruction because there's a certain bar, fulfillment bar, you get out of your endeavors. One thing that gets people started in the first place that drives them towards their goals is hunger and desire. But you can get to a point that's not the top. It's not the highest point you could go, but you're no longer hungry. You know, you are satiated to the point where your drive is sort of muted a little bit and you can just end up staying there. I've heard it said that being at the bottom has its benefits because there's a vacuum that serves as a force to pull you up. Obviously being at the top also is solid because you're accomplished, you're getting what you need, you're alive and participating in something at perhaps the highest level you could go. It's the middle that is sort of weird. You know, you've gone high enough to rest on your laurels and maybe you get some victories now and then you can tell yourself you're good, you can tell yourself you're skillful. Oh yeah, we made it to the quarterfinals. We're not out of the running. There's a chance we could beat the best teams. Where does that hunger come from then? One thing that I think is probably obvious and I've said a bunch of times is that in a league of really, really amazing teams, it'll come down to who's willing to go the farthest, who's willing to push themselves the most, who's willing to do difficult things in order to win. And so in that sense, it's pretty easy for me to go with Hinata on this one, though I think, like I said, he could be more tactful. And you don't want to break the team apart into pieces permanently. You do want to see them rise to their best and you do want to see them win. So I think as I said earlier, it's on Hinata. He wants this. He believes in himself. He thinks he can make it happen. It's up to him to make it happen. And that's tough if they're not on his side, but I think there's a way forward where he can demonstrate to them that he deserves the chance. And maybe one important element in that is reining it in a little bit in the way he's overly emotional about it. If he can take this feeling he has and channel it into a way that is more collected and productive, I think they can do all at once. I think they can stick to their roots, keep the fundamentals that have made them great, and develop Hinata as someone who's a really amazing player who hasn't hit his potential yet. Thank you.